Hell yeah. What's going on everybody? Uh, we're back doing another drive and shoot video. Um, we want to kind of start putting out more of these videos where we're just not necessarily a how-to or it's kind of advice but it's more so just we're going out and shooting myself and my roommate Benny. Um, today's episode I'm going to be taking control of this and uh, I'll be shooting this R32 Skyline. Um, it's an NA RB25. Just got repainted. This is a Dodge color. Hunter, what is this color called? Octane red as a Mopar color. Should look really good. Once again, we're doing another sunset shoot. If you couldn't tell, it's like our favorite time of the day to shoot. Um, but yeah, we're gonna take this thing up in the mountains and try and shoot some pictures that my vision for the whole look of the set is that I want it to look like it wasn't shot in Tennessee. I want it to look like it was shot somewhere in Washington or somewhere that is just not this part of the country. So that's what we're gonna try and do. to the first spot but it's not really a spot this is a really good space to like shoot pictures at sunset but the sun's kind of high right now and also this is on a slope um, so I'm just gonna shoot a couple candid pictures of the car and my car behind it just because they're both right-hand drive and this this doesn't look like Tennessee at all god damn I can't see a thing it's so bright out yeah Damn it, I'm trying to focus and I can't see. All right, nice high angle so you can see the lake. And that's about that. because that slope sucks. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have Hunter go turn around and drive past right here and I'm gonna fire off a burst at like a slower-ish shutter speed, maybe like one over 40th of a second, put my ND filter on and hopefully I can get like a really good flyby shot that's not too blurred out to where you can't make out the background but it has enough motion to it that you can see that the car is moving. I think that should be pretty cool and at least then he'll be on this road where it's more flat. 35 mil. We just rocked up to the spot. And uh, the lighting's a little bit iffy because the sun has just dipped down behind. It's kind of how it is with mountains. But uh, we're gonna make do with it. It should be pretty cool. We've got good consistent lighting. One thing that I like to do when I get to a location, I like to plan out my composition before the car is there. I figure out what angle I want and then I put the car within the angle. So right now, I'm kind of just doing a basis. I'm putting the car in a very simple, easy spot. Oh great, somebody pulled up right in the, the wrong place. I love that. Simple spot right now. Not gonna move the car around just yet. Take a couple pictures like this and then once I start seeing the compositions, I'll put the car in those angles. I've kind of framed this up a little bit so that I can shoot this side. And the car is basically the opposite way to the way that the mountain goes down, just creates a little bit different dynamic. If I did it the other way, it would kind of just flow a little bit too much. That way, at least it causes your eyes to go directly to where the car is. But I also positioned it this way so that I can shoot it this way and get this mountain in the back right here, which actually has a little bit of sunlight left on it. So. It makes it obvious that it's still a sunset shoot. So I pretty much exclusively shoot manual focus when I'm taking pictures. It just allows me to get accurate focus. I don't like to rely on the camera to do it for me. If the, if the subject's not moving, I stick to manual focus. Nice thing about this side of the car is the lighting is pretty aggressive. You're getting a very harsh contrast from how bright that sky is and how dark the mountain is shows off the body lines perfectly, especially on the rear arch. I shoot a lot of pictures vertical, but I also, if I find an angle that I like, I like to shoot some landscape too, just so that I have both options. 
So I'm shooting on a 24 to 70. I prefer to be on a 35 just because that's my favorite focal length. For detail shots, it does mean that I have a little bit more flexibility. So I'm gonna shoot a lot of details at 50. Nicer focal length compresses the background a little more. But right here, you see that lighting on the rear quarter panel, real harsh body line, and then just that extra line below it exaggerates the body lines really, really well. So I'm gonna focus on that. So this is actually a really good angle to show you what a CPL does. You know, it's personal preference as to which way you want to turn it. I usually do it so that the windshield is always dark. And I try to follow what looks natural to your eye. So right now, as you guys will see it, you can see it looks white and then red. I can actually make it look more red. So if you want to turn your CPL, you can show it. It was actually turned whenever I was recording initially. So was it red or was it white? It was red, I'm turning it right okay. now. So you can do it either way. I prefer to keep it as close to how it actually looks in real life. It is more white with red underneath, but I'll take a couple pictures with it being all red and I'll let you decide which looks better. Now that I look at it, I'm undecided as to which looks better, you know, polarized or unpolarized. So I'm actually gonna shoot both for every angle that I take pictures of. Just then when I get home, go to edit them, I can see which one responds to the type of look that I'm going to do um, a little better. I like to give myself as many options as possible. Pay attention to little things, like I was about to get a detail shot of these vents and there is a tiny little leaf stuck right in there. getting a close-up detail shot on the Gram Lights logo, and I'm doing like a low angle to where you can see those vents and the really like solid body line right there. It looks very dramatic from a low angle, but it looks more dramatic if the wheel is turned and faced towards me. Turned wheel shots are kind of controversial. Some people don't like them. It looks too like early 2000s magazine cover photo, but I'm a big fan personally. If the car is static and you can turn the wheels, turn the wheels for some shots, not all of them. trying to be conscious of is not being able to see daylight under the car. I'm really picky about that. If you can see daylight, you're not really doing a service to the owner of the vehicle. The point of lowering your car is to make it look lower. Because the wheels are turned, I gotta get like the full car shot. I'm gonna shoot it at 24, so it looks as dramatic as possible. I'm not gonna go all the way like super low, but I'm gonna say probably level with the headlights, between the headlights and the top of the windshield. Hide some of that clutter behind it. I don't feel like I have to say this because I feel like it should just be common sense but don't shoot this don't just don't do that that's not that's never gonna look good um, the wheel should always be turned if it is turned it should be turned towards the camera never away now I'm shooting this side of the car the lighting is gonna be way less harsh but because the Sun is already down behind the mountains we're still getting that same effect where it shows off the body lines really well the reason I parked the car this way like I said is because the mountain slopes down that way and the car faces this way naturally if I angle it right your eyes will follow line of the mountain and lead you into the subject. Um, there's a little bit of clutter behind it. I'm gonna do my best to hide the signs and any kind of stuff that shows up in the background behind the car. If not, I'll just remove them in post. But be careful for stuff like that. Don't ever, like if there's a sign and you plan to remove it, make sure it is away from the car so it's easier to clone out. If it, if it falls right in line with the car, it's gonna be really difficult for you to remove it. Being careful to watch for cars and trucks that go in the background because I don't really want them there. Kind of wait it out. There's no traffic right now. Wait for that car to go and... So front end shots. I love front end shots, especially with any kind of like stouncy cars. You're gonna see a little bit of camera at the front. I'm really anal about lining them up. There's one thing you can't just like really quickly take the picture and hope that you could line it back up in post. If you're slightly off to the left or the right, you will see it. So I do my best using the lines and uh, level that's on my screen to line everything up as best as I can. And then if I need to recenter it in post, I can, but front pictures, I'm so anal about. I will shoot them vertically, landscape. I'll line them up a million different times until I get the one where it's like, all right, that's perfect. A scan to the brown sheets and it's them. Hit the highway when she hit in my cell. Body talking to me, I've been listening well. The type of shit. The bike in there. Nice, yeah. Situational awareness is non existent. If you wouldn't mind moving, that would be awesome, man. I appreciate it. This man's really just say, Am I in your picture, man? And I said, Yeah, if you wouldn't mind moving, that would be great. 
we're like, yo, situational awareness. Clearly he has it, but he doesn't give a fuck. <laughs> Made sure they've got the tail lights on as it's getting darker out. You want to have tail lights on, it looks so good. And as Benny said in the last video, non LED tails like these on older cars look fantastic. So she be down to go wherever I go. I know I don't fuck around and snag me a keep down the ride with me till we can I shoot a panning shot while he turns around? We shall see. Probably not because I'm all full of panning shots. Got done at the other spot, figured we'd hit this spot on the way back because this side of the road is way flatter than the other side. This lighting is fucking incredible right now. I'm grabbing rear end shots just because it's beautiful with the tail lights. Why are you honking? We're not even in the road, you dumb bitch. Of course it's a fucking V6, Jesus. I'm trying to use whatever foreground I have because I have really limited angles, so. It honestly, I want to try and get that tracking shot from earlier, but right now, the one that I shot earlier wasn't good enough. I'm not very good at tracking shots, so I'm gonna shoot another one. 160th, so it's not super blurry. Damn, that looks good. I need to get one of him going back, too. centering him in the frame I think what I want to try and do is put him on the right rule of thirds and get him just as he's coming up before he blocks this uh, reflection right here that's when it's probably gonna look the absolute best because I have like the, the picture would be this one but uh, if it's more just angled over that way damn nature you're beautiful I just want you framed slightly differently, but the shot, the sh here, like I just took a test shot on a, a Civic that was passing by. I want it like that, like I, the ones that I got, you're like in the center of the frame, yeah. it just needs to be composed more over that way, so. Yeah, yeah it looks good. Let me go a little bit slower. No, you, the, the speed's absolutely fine. Yeah, I mean, you could even do 40 if you wanted to. 40 might be better, because then I'll be able to keep like more of a consistent movement. Definitely wasn't the best tracking. It's actually nice, we're getting enough light from this side of the mountain that it highlights the car so you can actually make out that it's a skyline. This is so beautiful. What's going on everyone? We are back home. I have all the pictures edited. I apologize if this video obviously looks different from some of the other videos. We only had Benny's camera, which is not set up to do video at all. I'm gonna show you guys a couple pictures uh, that I didn't show in the rest of the video. So yeah, let's jump into it. All right, so this shot detail on the rear quarter. Um, I like this because this is one of the few pictures where I did actually polarize for the red to be deeper on that side of the car instead of it being, you know, contrast to the white. All of the other pictures that I shot, I preferred them not to be polarized, but for some reason on this one, I feel like it just looked better. Um, I think it's partly to do with the fact that I'm shooting from a higher angle, so it's more of the ground and it's less distracting and that just really vibrant red draws your eye in. Next picture, this is a detail shot on the Gram Lights logo. I love this, the red is super bright, but obviously the only thing that is tack tack and focus is the Grand Lights logo. Nothing super crazy in terms of composition other than the logo being right on that left rule of thirds. Just a cool looking picture, good detail shot. Next shot, this is a front end picture. I didn't get to show this, but this was actually with the motorcyclist in there. I actually had to clone him out for this picture. Yeah, I like the way the two mountains kind of lead you in to the driver's seat, which is obviously on the right hand side of the car. Obviously it is a skyline, but that's just an extra little thing that lets you know, like, hey, it's right hand drive. Love to be able to show some of these cool stickers and designs that are on the back windows or even windshields of cars occasionally. So shout out to the people that design these stickers. They look really cool and I just wanted to highlight that. Big, big fan of this. I love the 
the tail lights. Um, it's nothing too crazy. I believe I shot this at 50 mil, uh, so it's a little bit more compressed than the rest of the pictures. But I also like to frame the car in specific ways. So for this shot, you can kind of see the space above and below the car. Um, above is like two thirds and the bottom is the other third. So it's just kind of biased to that lower, but that allows me to then basically put the lower rule of thirds through the middle of the wheels. Um, and just give it that extra air space above the car. This shot's really cool, just a detail on the tail lights and the mountain in the background basically leads you directly into the center of the frame, which is that right tail light. You can also see the wing above it. This is one of the pictures you guys are probably dying to see at the end of the video. This is the tracking shot after the sun had gone down. Um, it is not perfectly tack sharp, but honestly, I feel like it's pretty dope just knowing that it's not perfect. Sometimes rolling or panning shots like this, they don't need to be tack sharp for them to look good. It really is just about telling the story. And right here, as you can see, you've got those two yellows, you've got the yellow from the lines and then the reflection off of the water. And like I said, when we were taking the pictures, you got enough light coming from the other side mountain that it lights up that rear quarter panel and you can tell that it's a skyline. This was the first picture that I actually shot and I ended up cropping it inwards and then lining up the car more on the right rule of thirds. Which as you can see right here, didn't turn out as good because most of the light had disappeared, but I'm still a big fan of this picture also. And then just to throw it in for the sake of throwing it in, this is not really that good of a picture at all, but I feel like it's a cool behind the scenes shot. You can see on the left hand side, that's the front of the Majesta and it's lighting up the back of the skyline. And then you can see traffic coming in from the other way and then just the silhouette of the mountains that's super aggressive. For me, it's a cool candid shot. It's basically showing kind of behind the scenes. It tells a little bit of a story. Obviously we're parked up on the side of the road. There's traffic going by and there's mountains in the background. It doesn't make the car look that great, but when I'm shooting picture sets, I also like to have those pictures in there that are maybe of the owner or something that tells the story of that shoot and not just the car in a location. Anyways guys, thank you so much for watching. I uh, appreciate it. If you are enjoying these videos, please let us know in the comments, give us a thumbs up. And if you wanna see more, make sure to subscribe and turn notifications on. We're gonna be doing this a lot more often. We've been having some good response to it and me and Benny absolutely love going out shooting together. So, I think what we're going to try and do is eventually start doing these videos with other photographers and that way we can highlight more talented people within the community. So yeah, let us know in the comments what you think and we'll be back for more videos pretty soon, but appreciate you guys. We'll see you soon.